excited, aren't you? Hello, Toronto! This is a very exciting night for us. I'm really freaking excited to be here tonight. What a great audience. I'm so, so excited to be here. It's such a great honor. And I'm so honored to be able to show my film to this august crowd. What's really fun is people who love film, and you are all that, and we're very proud and happy to be here with all of you. We should not be afraid to tell stories, because we are afraid that people will judge. Thank you for giving us the opportunity and a platform to be able to showcase our work as female filmmakers. This is for my parents who couldn't come, so thank you. I'm going to prove it to them. I did it! I've just realized what TIFF actually stands for. Toronto is fucking fantastic. <laughs> this is the story of our city. And we're a very proud city. And I want the world to see it. Welcome, welcome everybody to In The Now on my TCN TV network. So I'm a little like almost shy today. And it's funny because it's like, so why, are you, why are you shy for it? But it's because like I have a special guest in today. We're going to get to that in a second. But when there's people in here, Dave, I think I get scared. I think I'm nervous. I don't know why. Like I do this every week. <laughs> no, I am. I actually am kind of nervous. But you know why it's okay you would be nervous around anyone who creates greatness and today we are talking all toronto international film festival last week we did the caribbean i did a small little bit on the caribbean film festival that's happening uh and you know what i thought it would be right to honor some of the caribbean films that are in the toronto um, toronto international film festival this year so the 43rd Toronto International Film Festival added 19 Canadian features and 24 short films to its lineup this year. Today, we are proud to have one of the filmmakers here to speak about his experience, of course, with TIFF and being one of the films that's being premiered this year. It's kind of exciting. So, ranging from science fiction to fantasy, myth to documentary, and romance to dystopic vision of our neighbors to the south, this year, Canadian films come from every region in the country, stretching from far east to west, north to south. So, the festival's Canadian short film selection showcases masterful films that tell stories of complex human relationships, and they introduce a range of characters facing diverse challenges, coming, from t coming to terms with who they are, personal battles, those type of things. So that's what kind of makes a lot of the films this year very interesting so when we do come back 
I'm going to introduce you to a young man who is doing really, really great things. I just kind of want to hurry past all of this so I can get to the meat and potatoes of this. I want to be able to grab and give you guys the experience from a director's point of view on In The Now. Are you retiring smart? Make your home's equity work for you. With your home's equity and our 30 years of experience, the Retire Smart Properties team can help you achieve the quality of life you've always wanted. Our services are 360 degrees. We'll give you advice, take care of staging and selling, and help you find the perfect home and community to transition to. It's time to enjoy the retirement lifestyle you deserve. Visit our website today to learn how you can use your home to retire comfortably. The Retire Smart Properties team, powered by Remax West. So something I've learned about creative people, and this is just in general, uh, they usually like to step out of comfort zones, which is what makes uh, creative people so creative because they're not doing the same thing like everybody else. So most of the great writers, directors have taken the leap and explored other avenues and genres just for various reasons. As an established filmmaker, the last thing you want to do is to be predictable, which is true. You don't want to do the same thing that everybody else has done. So I definitely applaud our guest today because he dares to flip the film world and make it actually his own. So here's a little bit about who we have today because sometimes people need to hear, I wanna tell the greatness and then hear his experience. That's what we're gonna do today. So after winning the award for best short film in 2011 at the Toronto International Film Festival with doubles, which is what we just saw, with Slight Peppa, he says pepper here, but I say pepper. Can I say pepper? Yeah. <laughs> they were supposed to say pepper, weren't they? <laughs> they didn't. They said pepper. Okay. So, filmmaker. Oh, you know what? I think I got it. So, when I first saw his name, you have to be very mindful with people's names. Um, West Indian people get a little bit. They don't. They get a little upset when you say their name wrong. They they say they don't, but it's the way they correct you. So I had to ask to make sure I said his name right. The first part's easy, Ian, simple. All right, Harnarain. Yes, got it, and I'm gonna continue to practice, okay. So he returns to TIFF this fall with the world premiere of Karani, and I'm, I don't even know if I said that one right, did I? I said, you see, you see, I'm sorry. Karani, I need correction, this is, I should have asked about Karani, all right. So this is Ian's, I'm sorry, Ian, I'm so, Karen, uh, yes. So Ian's latest film tells the story of a mother working in America who's trying to stay connected to the young daughter she had to leave back home in Trinidad. So working as one of the many Trinidadian nannies in New York City, Ranji, tell me I said that right. Uh, Ranji, <laughs> Ian is so all right, Rajani. Sure. 
You know what? When he comes, in, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave this part. When he comes on next segment, I'm going to have him say all these names for me and correct me. Listen, I don't have an ego. I know when I'm messing things up. And this here, I'm messing up. So I'm not saying the names until he comes and actually says them for me. Oh, Lord. So I'll go into his film, okay? He gets its, it gets its name from the Karani. Karani. Why do I keep saying Ka? Karani. Karani Swamp, a protected land. And listen, do me a favor. Can you play, play the video? I'm having him come on. You guys are going to correct me. You're not going to embarrass me on TV. No, no, no. Play the video, please. <laughs> So in our last few minutes, I'm going to introduce, and then we're going to go into more. This is the great. Is it okay if I start? And first of all, listen, his beard, his beard game right now is on point. All summer. That's, that's what I do. I am so proud of you, young man. Thank you. <laughs> Ian. Harnarine. You can do it. Harnarine. You've done it. You've done it. Harnarine. Ian Harnerine. Guys, just, we'll be back in a few minutes on In The Now. Ian. <laughs> Are you retiring smart? Make your home's equity work for you. With your home's equity in our 30 years of experience, the Retire Smart Properties team can help you achieve the quality of life you've always wanted. Our services are 360 degrees. We'll give you advice, take care of staging and selling, and help you find the perfect home and community to transition to. It's time to enjoy the retirement lifestyle you deserve. Visit our website today to learn how you can use your home to retire comfortably. The Retire Smart Properties Team, powered by REMAX West. I would like to, I like, first of all, to say I'm, yeah, a little bit like, whenever, I'm telling you, whenever I meet someone who's done great things, I'm just like, well, what do I say sometimes? Like, I do get flushed. Dave says no, but I really, truly am kind of flushed by you because, like, you're, dude, you've done some big things, my friend. I would like to welcome everybody, Mr. Ian Harnerine. You see that? <laughs> Practice. I was practicing my head over and over again on the commercial. <laughs> practicing. So... Welcome. Thank you. Thank Welcome you for to the show. Welcome. And I'm glad you took a moment out. I know you've probably been involved a lot with the all the festivals mm -hmm. and the events, so you're probably doing quite a bit. So I really appreciate you coming. No, here it's today. a pleasure. It's so I was telling you before we started that I kind of looked at everyone else's interview and I was like, I don't want to do any of that. I want to learn about who you are because mm -hmm. I feel that people are able to connect with you. They will connect to what you do, but they have to kind of know who you are, right? Mm -hmm. So let me go back a little bit. 
let's t- I always go to parents. I'm okay, my background is psychology, so I'm gonna get okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. Which of your parents is the creative one? Um that's a good question. Uh you know, none of them are, you know, like most Western Union families, none of my family are painters or filmmakers <laughs> or yes. anything like that. That doesn't right. make any sense. Because <laughs> right. they don't know anybody like that. There's no one in my family that's done that work before. Right. Um, but my father was was a photographer. I mean, not a professional photographer in any way, but when he was growing up in Trinidad, um, I remember he one of his first paychecks that he got was to go and buy a camera. And this was like a, you know, this was like in the 50s in Trinidad, in a rural small village in Trinidad. And my grandmother, his mother, was really upset with him because they could have really used that money. Of course. Um, but what's amazing are those pictures that he left behind are just, you know, they document the family, but also a way of life that just doesn't exist anymore in Trinidad and won't exist anymore. So he had that creative eye, Dad. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the photographs are amazing. And actually, the last couple or, or the last year... Um, my wife and I have been like preserving them, trying to save them because some of them are just so beautiful, like really, really nice. beautiful pictures. That is awesome. Okay, so how did you feel about? Okay, so when you first discovered, because there's that time I think when you realize there's something that you really like. When did you realize that it was film and directing, and just the idea of a film, putting a story together? When did that hit you? I think it was when I was in, um, probably in grad school, it was when I made the decision. Okay. Um, because I, I, went, I was in physics grad school in Chicago. I did my undergrad here at York, actually. All right. And then I moved to Chicago for grad school. And then I was um, volunteering at a, um, at a mentor program for kids from the Cabrini Green Projects in Chicago, which is, you know, at one time was considered the worst place to live in America. Okay. Like, um, if you remember the old sitcom Good Times, Good Times took place on... Right. Cabrini Green. Okay. Um, but while I was there, they somehow got a grant for a bunch of cameras and, like, some computers and stuff like that. And they wanted somebody to run this video program for these kids. I had no experience at all. I was like, but sounds interesting. I'll do it. Mm. And so when I was working with those kids, with those young people, they would, you know, they'd make, you know, music videos or, like, funny videos, whatever, for themselves. But what was cool is, like, when we'd watch it back. And we'd watch it back, and they would see themselves for the first time. And, like, they were in control of their stories. And the delight and the power that they felt. I started to question myself and, like, how come I've never seen representations of, of myself or of my culture in movies and TV? And that's when I started to think about storytelling as a, um, as a way of doing what I want to do. So that's interesting. So you started in a path. So it sounds like you were doing your own science realm. Yep. Right? Um, and then you go and you get involved in this project, um, which I'm sure probably just sprung up. Did you know you were going to do that? Or was that something that, yeah, like that just, that's life. It just kind of sprung up. And that's kind of what started this journey of storytelling for you. Yeah, so I was, li- so I was studying physics and I was pretty much going to be a physicist. And when I was living in Chicago, Chicago is like a very, it's a very polarized and segregated city. Um, there's, you know, most of the white people live on the north side, all of the black people live on the south side, and in Chicago, you're either black, you're white, or you're Mexican. And Mexican, of course, is like all, an entire continent of people. Right. But I was neither one of those. And so it was really hard to fit in into those categories. Um, Mm. and so it was when I became aware of like these problems in Chicago and I tried to, I don't know, somehow, you know, make a change. And so I started volunteering at that program. You know what? You say something that's interesting, how you didn't really know where to, where, like, how, so how did you find your place? Where did you end up? Because if it's one or the other, <laughs> how did you find your place? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. You because didn't. there okay. were, I mean, there were a lot of, well, there's, like, a small community of Indian people, like, from India there. But there's a even smaller community of West Indians. Um, I think there's, like, a couple, there's, like, a few Jamaicans. I mean, that's changing right now, but... Even in the deep south side, there's, like, a couple of Jamaican places. Um, and so it was really hard because everyone just assumes you're from India, which is not true. And it's hard to – people just don't know who you are. And so you never really feel as if you are somewhere you're, where you're being understood um, Got it. By, by the society. Got it. Okay, so this is where you kind of said, okay, 
So what was that first storytelling experience for you? Tell me about that. The first time you put your story, your perspective, your lens, and painted that picture. What was it called? Was it something that you even put out there, or was that something you... Yeah, I did, it was something I did for school. Um, so when I went to film school, you have to make a bunch of films. Uh, and I made, yeah, I made this four-minute black and white movie with no dialogue and um it was hard like it was really really hard to come from a really rigorous scientific background of how things are taught to you and how you're expected to to learn mm -hmm. to a place where there are no rules and you can do whatever you want and it's a matter of you being comfortable with yourself and being able to tell your stories that you want to tell in a way that you want to do it okay. um, and that took a long time like that took years to get used to to be able to be as open as I think you have to be as an artist. Right. So you had to do a complete mind switch from being like structured, structured, structured to free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> People don't I mean, understand how hard that is. It's really hard. It's like it's a completely different way of thinking. And I mean, there's it's cliches to say, oh, there's no wrong answer and stuff like that. But it's true. It's just really about you staying true to your vision and to your ideas. And that's hard. It's really hard when there's... There's no, there's no right or wrong answer to right. what that is. <laughs> so what do I do here? You're just gonna, yeah. You do what you want, though. That's exactly, the beauty of it. Exactly, so exactly. you get to just do what you want. Okay, so talk to me about the development of your skills. Um, I think we live, I don't want to judge. I don't want to say it like that. But in this day and na in time, I think everything is very like now. Like People want things like now, like right yeah. now. What can we get now? Talk to maybe some of the young people who want to do this, or just in general about how long it took you to develop your skills to be able to get to this point where your film is being debuted in one of the largest film festivals in the world, right? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think particularly for, for younger people, it's you can't put yourself in a box. And I know when you go to high school, you go to school, like they, they ask you to make decisions that will probably, that you think will affect the rest of your life. Like you have to take this math class or that class to do this to get into university and when you're in university you have to choose a major yeah and then there's always that balance of making yourself happy and making your parents, parents happy, happy. yeah things like that very true um but the tr the fact of the matter and from my experience and from a lot of people that i know it actually doesn't matter like it is important for you to get an education that's really really important 100 percent. but it's there's never a wrong time for you to change your mind and to try something else i like that yeah i like that so you can even though I always feel like maybe for the first little bit of our lives, we kind of have to satisfy the parents. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, like, sure. we're kind of living with them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, for yeah, the yeah, yeah. From, for some of us, we are. And, like, you know, like, you want to make sure that they're happy. But then in your head, you're like, I have this complete different life that I want to live. Totally. No, and that's always a balance, right? There's, even in filmmaking, there are things that you do for yourself and there's things that you do for others. Yeah. And it's always a balance. And I'm, I'm totally okay with that. But it's... At the end of the day, to get there, I'm sure, no? Oh, yeah, no, it's hard, but, like, you have to remember that because it's ultimately it's, you know, your parents are going to die one day and it's just going to be you, and you've got to be able to say that you're happy with the decisions that you've made and the life that you've created for yourself. Very, very wise. You're so young. How are you so wise? Thank you. Wow. <laughs> you're the first person to say that I'm young. Thank you. <laughs> so when we do come back, we're going to have more with Ian, and we're going to actually look into uh, – the directing side because he's done some really good work and i want you guys to check it out like as much as you guys may some of you might just be knowing about him now he's been doing this for a while we'll see you soon on in the now
Are you retiring smart? Make your home's equity work for you. With your home's equity and our 30 years of experience, the Retire Smart Properties team can help you achieve the quality of life you've always wanted. Our services are 360 degrees. We'll give you advice, take care of staging and selling, and help you find the perfect home and community to transition to. It's time to enjoy the retirement lifestyle you deserve. Visit our website today to learn how you can use your home to retire comfortably. The Retire Smart Properties Team, powered by Remax West. Welcome back. So we're learning some things in here today. Today we are here with the great Mr. Ian Harnerine. You got it. <laughs> you guys are just joining us to understand the joke. You got to go back to like the first segment. Okay. So last segment, we spoke about some of the um, experiences getting into what he does right now. And if, one of the things I think I picked up which I really want to reiterate is it's never too late to change. Even when you're like 60, some of the great people didn't do their things until later, like in their lives. Like Tina Turner is a great example. She, she became Tina Turner at 40, like 42. Yeah. Like, and look how great she is. Everyone knows who she is. Like even if you were born 10 years ago, you might have a clue. So filming, that film that we just saw, that is the film that is going to be in this year's film festival. Tell us a little bit about it, and then I'm going to kind of dig a little bit deeper because I have some questions. Sure. This is an interesting topic. So <clears throat> tell us about this movie. So the film is called uh, Kearney, um, and it's about a West Indian nanny in New York that's trying to reconnect with her daughter that she left behind back in Trinidad. Without giving too much away, how did she end up there? Is that giving too much away? How did she end up in, 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 in New York? Without her daughter. Yeah. yeah, well, I think this is a common story for a lot of West Indian for a lot of West Indians a lot of West Indians in New York particularly nannies and other caregivers they um, you know they're looking for work right there's not a lot of opportunities to make money in Trinidad at least a lot of money and if they go to New York they can actually make American dollars which and, is very helpful yeah and you're, they're able to send it back back home to the family to support them there so okay where did this this story idea come from how where did this pop up from is this something that you've experienced personally have you seen the experience how did this come to be so just you know living in new york and if you walk around you know the the upper middle class neighborhoods of new york whether in brooklyn or manhattan you'll always see um these strollers with white babies and they're being pushed by black and brown women um anytime during the day or if you go to any of the parks like the parks are just filled with you know with that and really? it's interesting because, like, playgrounds all the time, it's fascinating because, you know, there's a lot, there's a group of women, and they do create a sense of community amongst themselves, and they do create community, and they're all friends, mm. um, and that's, that's, I think that's amazing. Like, that's something that's, that's cool, that they do build community amongst themselves, even though they are so far away from home. Um, and so that's, you know, just seeing this phenomenon, I started to, to wonder about them and their stories, and those that they left behind a lot of the time. Um, and that's that's kind of where the story started there. Did you get to, have you had an opportunity to speak to one of these? You obviously yeah, no, you got some... absolutely. So there's, you know, even within my own family and within my circle of friends, there's, you know, there are nannies within that circle. And it's interesting, like I think every person in, every Caribbean or West Indian person in New York has some personal connection to to a nanny or a caregiver. In one way or another. So it's that prevalent. Like that's oh, just absolutely. like that's the job that you get. Uh, do you know the conditions, how they're treated sometimes in these situations? Are we going to see stuff like that in this film? Yeah. I mean, we don't like, so I did a lot of research. Some of that stuff doesn't end up in the film. Okay. But in the research that I did, and actually I had a really good um, conversation with Spike about this when I was telling him about the story of Spike Lee about the story. And he was talking about how 
a lot of these women are colored women, but they are working for these upper middle class families that are contain very powerful white women in them. Mm-hmm. Um, and for a lot of the time, you know, they all have fairly good jobs, well paying jobs, um, and good professions, but yet they come home and they, they're able to exploit, you know, black and brown women or colored women um, in their home life. And I think that's a really fascinating aspect of the work as well. But you, can, you didn't put that in the film. That's not in the film. That's like okay. for a much larger story yeah. that, I, that I have in mind. Okay, so this was just to give people the idea of the experience of exactly. that, but not going into that section. Because I mean, that is like, yeah, that's a tough one. You have to really delve into that in, yeah. a, in a different no, no, way. Be very mindful of how you delve into that too, yep. right? Okay, so let's talk about your journey through the swamp. I have a quote from you. Okay. <laughs> so, with the help of our guide, this was his journey through the swamp. This is what what you had said to a, a magazine, that with the help of our guide, we were able to get relatively close to several scarlet ibis, and we just shot a lot of footage, letting the birds do their thing until they flew away. I remember the moment when one of them appeared to look directly at the camera, and I got goosebumps. It was magical. Tell me about going through that swamp. We saw that video yep. a little bit earlier, and it, it is beautiful. I heard there's so, like, there's, like, Thousands of species there in that one swamp. Is that true? It's very true. That's yeah, that's, that swamp is like a birder's paradise. Those people that are really into birds and exotic birds, like that's, it's a sanctuary. That's the place to go. Yeah. Like people can't even just go up in there how they want to, right? Well, there are, there are tours of um, commercial tours that people do. Okay. Uh, but the areas that we shot in were actually very restricted areas, and we had to get special permission from the government wow. to actually go and shoot there. Okay. And we had to make promises that we would never actually divulge where we shot um, the wow. film. Wow. Because wow. They, they, need to, they need those those locations to remain a secret because, unfortunately, sadly, there's a lot of poaching of that bird uh, where people use it for feathers and their meat as well. Um, and so the government has, you know, they're trying to clamp down on that on that behavior. Okay. Are, in, are any of these animals endangered is the no scarlet ibis so or? the scarlet ibis was just placed actually just recently a couple of weeks ago under a special classification not an endangered species but i think it's a special species or something like that but okay. it's interesting that how they just passed this law where if you are caught poaching the birds i think there's like a hundred thousand dollar fine or something oh like wow that. so they're really like cracking down on it, it right now which is good okay so take us to some of your moments i got we had your quote but what was one of the, why did you pick there? That's my, actually, that's my first question. Before we go through your moments, why did you pick there for so, this movie? Okay, so that, the Kearney Swamp, Kearney, um, it's the one place where this bird actually lives, where it lives. But it's a really fascinating bird. So it's the national bird of Trinidad. But at the same time, it lives in the mangroves of the swamp. But every morning, it wakes up and it flies all the way to Venezuela, which is miles away. Really? where it feeds on those shores for crabs and shrimp, and that's where it gets its red color from, is from eating those things. But every night, it flies back. And it's actually one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, is if you go to the Kearney Swamp at a certain time every day, it's literally thousands of birds flying back. It's, and it's just like this, the sky is covered in red. It's beautiful. That's crazy. It's crazy. It is crazy. But what's... I think is amazing about this bird is that I saw the parallel with these women in New York in that they travel far, but they always want to come back. And so it's a story uh, of their migration. And, and I like see it. I just connected. You get it? You get it? <laughs> I just, it just all went like, oh, that's beautiful. And the red, because you guys are Trinidadian. I got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> It all connected. That's pretty cool how you did that. Thank you, yeah. Did that just, like, hit you one day? Were you just, like, red bird from Trini? Women? Nannies? Come back? Yes. Genesis. Is that how it happened? Yeah, I don't remember the specific <laughs> moment that it happened, but I'm interested in migration and stories of immigration and things like that. Very, very cool. Okay, so now... Oh, actually, you just did share that experience. So that's cool. Let me see how much time we have left. Okay, good. Um, how do you go about choosing your actresses and your actors for your films because see these are the names you're gonna say for me Mm -hmm. okay so what are the two 
names of the two main characters, the mother and the daughter, in this? So the mother is Radha Singh, and the daughter is Ariel Rubin. Okay. And the names in the film? Sorry, it's not. It's, I messed Ari, up it's completely. Ariana, it's Ariana Rubin. I'm sorry, I mispronounced her name. It's okay. Yeah. In the film, though, what are their names? What are you, is that their actual names? Oh, I'm name? sorry. No, yeah, that's their actual names. In the film, it's uh, Rajni is the mother, and Mosaic See. is the daughter. I love, okay, Mosaic. There's something to that Mosaic. It is. Okay, so the entire film was funded by an organization called um, Labocini and Imaginal Disc. But Labocini is a really fascinating and important organization that's always trying to bridge the gap between science and filmmakers, right? So they do a lot of work of, collab of people collaborating with one another. Okay. So this entire film was from a prompt given by them in terms of trying to create films about this mythical creature called the chimera. And what a chimera is, is an animal that has the DNA of two different animals that create a hybrid animal. Hmm. Um, and, and so it's a unique, you know, it's a mythical sci -fi. creature. Sci -fi yeah, it's just sci-fi, absolutely. Sci -fi. But they were trying to approach it from a more realistic science, science background as opposed to science fiction. Science fiction, fiction. Right. okay. Um, and so this is my take on that. It's sort of, well, if you see the film... Uh, you'll see that there is a creature that is a hybrid between the, the Scarlet Ibis and a person and the mother. Hmm. I kind of just gave away the movie, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. They do it in trailers mostly anyhow. Yeah. Actually, your trailer did not give us anything. Purposely. I know. Yeah. I saw that. I'm like, that was kind of mean. Yeah. Like, I just see a red bird. It pretty. Yeah, I purp <laughs> we, we purposely made it. Like, just really vague and hoping just to capture people's imagination and interest. Okay. All right. So, I want to thank you. Thank you. Honestly. I have more questions, but I don't know if I... Can I keep you for, like, a little bit more time? I'm not going anywhere. Yes. Okay, because I have I'll more questions. I'll sleep here all night if you let me. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be kicking me out if you give me the chance. I'm going to keep you for 10 more minutes because I have more questions. I'm so fast. I just want to get in this business. <laughs> See you guys soon on In The Now. <laughs> That's great. I haven't heard that in such a long time. Somebody say that. सबको लगता है अपना मन का लाइफ ना रियल होना चाहिए मुझे भी ऐसा ही लगता है कोई प्राइम मिनिस्टर कोई प्रेसिडेंट कोई सिंगर कोई ओलंपिक चैंपियन कोई सुपरस्टार कोई रेसलर कोई कोई को लगता है अपन फुटबॉल वर्ल्ड कप में भी खेलेंगे सोचने में क्या जाता है पर मैं क्लियर हूं मुझे दुनिया के हर एक चिंचोर को तीन से भला दो दो से भला एक करके करना है तो करना है वैसे हर इंसान को ना पानी पीते रहना चाहिए मुझे तो पानी पीते ही रहना चाहिए डिहाइड्रेशन कब हो जाए पता ही नहीं चलेगा डिहाइड्रेशन क्या हाथ पैर मुंह नाक कान कुछ भी फूट जाए पता नहीं चलता यहां तक कि हाई बीपी लो बीपी एक रेयर टाइप की बीमारी है कंजेनिटल इनसेंसिटिविटी टू पेन बाद में गूगल कर लेना पर अगर अब सिंपल हिंदी में आपको समझाऊं तो वो कहते हैं ना मर्द को दर्द नहीं होता वही बीमारी है सो आई जस्ट आई हैड टू शो दोस आई थॉट दैट वाज प्रीटी फनी आई हैव अनदर वन टू शो बट दैट वाज प्रीटी हिलेरियस दैट वाज फनी लाइक 
this is the, you know what, and I'm showing, I wanted to show other, um, other, I guess, cultured films, I guess I'll call them that, that are in TIFF. Uh, because there's a lot of great work that's out there. And again, some of these, I think that this one is, his name is Vasan Bala. I think I said that right. Yes. He's from India. So if you guys are interested in these movies, they're playing this weekend as well. Actually, how about we tell people when yours is playing, and then I'm going to go back into you because I do want to show you guys one other trailer, but I do want to make sure I focus back my attention to you because I have questions. Sure. Uh, I know some are playing at the Scotiabank mm -hmm. Theater. I think that's where yours is playing yep. on Sunday. Sunday night, 7.15. Sunday night, okay. And you had one that actually played on the 11th? Tuesday night, yep. See how, um, see how on it I am? You're on it. You got it. That's a memory. That's really good. Okay, some, not always, though. I can't say your name. <laughs> Karen-y? Did I get that right you this got time? It. Yes, good. You good, know, good. look how many times you have to repeat that to me, though. Like, I'm daft. Okay, so. You learned, though. We're capable I of I did. Learning. I got it. See, I changed. I leveled up in the show today. So, um... Spike Lee, like I made an initial like post for you and I put it up this morning really early. And then as I was going through and learning more about you, I'm like, I need to change this post. Spike Lee is huge. How, what, first of all, tell me, how did that even go down? How did you guys, how did the universe bring that into your life? Yeah, I don't know. It's a crazy story. I mean, I remember going to the film festival myself, you know, many years ago and going to see his films like that's it's just amazing right Spike Lee yeah yeah <laughs> and then he so he teaches at NYU in the graduate film program he's a professor there and um, I was in his class and when you take his class he has office hours sign up for office hours with Spike and I mean it's crazy it's like any other professor and during that time he like reads your scripts gives you notes like seriously reads your scripts and gives you amazing notes um, and in my case like he gave brilliant surprisingly just like you don't you don't expect that he's actually going to take your work seriously yeah and he does and he gives you really astute notes and then when he um when the film was being edited he watched every cut of the film and gave amazing notes and then he also supported the film financially as well so he's been really instrumental to you know to my work mentor yeah absolutely yeah no question yeah that's you have to understand like i'm just going back to like do the right thing right Malcolm X, like one of the greatest films mm -hmm. ever, <laughs> like ever. Yeah, for sure. And it's just like sitting, how, how is it like sitting in front of like a genius? Just he's, a such a, he's an incredibly smart man. And I don't think that, you know, there's like the public persona of Spike that you see at the Knicks games and the mm -hmm. commercials and stuff like that. And, and that's there, but he's also really giving of his time. And it's not just me. It's like so many other filmmakers that he's given them an opportunity and I don't think people realize that, or at least the media doesn't necessarily pay attention to that. Of course not. Or he doesn't really publicize doesn't it. Doesn't talk about it. Yeah, but he's doing so much for young filmmakers behind the scenes that he really gives credit to. And like, if he, they ever write the definitive biography of him and make all the connections to people whose films he's helped and careers he started because of that, I mean, it's going to be a long list. It's a crazy list. And you can call, you can actually call this man your mentor. So. Tell you about the very first time you did something with him when he was your executive producer. Was that the doubles and pepper? Yeah, doubles and side pepper. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I remember one specific thing. Like the, um, I showed him like a really rough version of the movie. We came back from Trinidad, we shot the movie, and the opening scene used to be a lot longer. It was like a lot longer before we actually got to where it was. And he's like, Ian, nobody cares about that stuff. Just get to the story. Nobody cares. <laughs> And it was a really important lesson. We cut down the movie by like two minutes because of that. Just cut out so much stuff that we that we spent hours shooting. But then he <laughs> was just like, you don't need it. He's like, just cut it out. Nobody cares about that. Just get to the story. It's a short film. Get to the story. Were you in your feelings at all? No. I, no I've gotten to the point where I think that's one of the things as a filmmaker is you have to get used to criticism all the time. And particularly when you're working with somebody like Spike in that capacity. Right. Like, they're not trying to tear you down. They're not trying to be mean about they're anything. They're trying to be helpful. They're trying to be helpful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's one of the things that it takes a really, really long time. And even if for me, it's still hard to do. But to take notes from people, to take criticisms. criticisms. But you have to be able to do that. That, that that's, part, that's part of the job. It's a very, it's, it's a humbling experience. But yeah. it's, it's, you're right. I think it is necessary. Like, it's. 
how you, it is how you learn. It just sucks when you hear it. It's just like I spent all this time yeah, I mean, <laughs> doing so all this work. When I was in physics, like you'd, uh, you know, you'd find an exam or something, and, you know, partial differential equations or something. And you feel bad because you put in the You time said study. that like I wouldn't know what it was. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. But like you, you study hard and you, and it sucks if you don't get it right or something. But when you make a movie or something or something creative and people don't get it, I mean, it's worse. It hurts your soul, right? Like it, it does. Really, it's it's like, why? In so, other, in so many other ways. Yes. You know, and it's, it's funny with the creative um, with the creative experience. I think it's like that regardless. Even with writing. I do a lot of writing. Mm-hmm. So for me, when I put something out there and I'm not getting the reaction I want, I'm just like, how do you not get it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. How do you not understand what I'm trying to say to you? <laughs> get it together. So it's like you have to take your ego out of it. Absolutely. In order for you to learn. There's no ego. You can't have an ego in filmmaking. You just can't. And there was another one, Time Traveler. Time Traveler. Okay. So Talk to me about that one. That was actually co-written with Spike. Um, and it's the true story of a physicist that's trying to build the world's first time machine. It's an incredible story. I mean, it's just You got like, to bring your science in there. Yeah, exactly. That's it's cool. Like, you got to, like, slide it in. It's an incredible story. <laughs> And hopefully it'll get made soon because, like, the script is amazing and the story is just, like, I've never heard anything like it before. So what are you saying? That we kind of just dropped that? People didn't know about the time traveler or did people kind of know about it? Uh, t- no, it was, so it's based on a book. The book was fairly fairly popular. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's out there. It's okay. definitely out there. Okay. I thought I was getting an exclusive, but I guess no exclusives for me. Not right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay because I got you here. That's pretty exclusive. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. In. Absolutely. I um, really want you guys to support our local talent. We don't support our own enough, honestly. I think it's like a what's wrong with Toronto sometimes. I'm like, support us. Not the, not all. When it comes to the Raptors and Drake. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, if, if I could be critical of the community, just just for a second, just please, for a please. I mean, I think it's it's. I think Toronto does a really good job of supporting culture when it comes to music and food because that's like what we've really grown up on. We like to bubble and yam. Yeah, yeah, and that's great. Like, <laughs> I think that's amazing because that's a big part of the culture. But I think we can do a lot better, and I include myself in this, in supporting the visual arts when it comes to you know, painting sculptures or even writing, like novelists or um, filmmaking, whatever. I think we can all do a better job when it comes Agreed. to that. Agreed. Agreed. Um, because we got it down when it comes to music and food. You know? Like all the fets all the time, those are... <laughs> Packed, rammed. It's good. That's those are important. When was your last fet? <laughs> you, st- you stumped me on that one. <laughs> I honestly just don't have the time. I don't have the time. I get it. You have to get to a fet soon, though. Yeah, I should. I yeah, should. It's time. I need some food. Why? <laughs> I don't have a problem with that, as you can see. I'm all right with that. Some doubles. Yeah. <laughs> We mentioned some names. I'm not going to mention those names of where we're going to go for some doubles. Okay. <laughs> wow. Uh, Anisha is the one <laughs> who mentioned it. I sold you out. Yes, I did. So I want to thank you so much. I'm going to show one more film that we were talking about. It's actually called, where's my little mouse thing here? Dave, don't say nothing. Uh, the Hate You Give, support, support, get out. These are my three picks. So far are these three so get out there guys support it thank you so much you guys have a wonderful wonderful friday and see you guys next week on in the now my name is star two r's daddy named me that garden heights mama and daddy says our life is here because our people are here we got mr rubens barbecue mr lewis's barbershop and daddy's store the high school is where you go to get junk, high, or pregnant. We don't go there. Williamson is another world. So when I'm here, I'm star version two. Yo, those kids are lit. Basically, Williamson star doesn't give anyone a reason to call her ghetto. And I hate myself for doing it. Until the weekend comes around. I get those goosebumps every time. What's up? Where you been at? I don't know. You be hanging with all the white kids. Shut up. Yeah, when you're not around, when you go that to the out of the car. Yo, Star, you okay? Go back where he told you. Khalil, I'm not playing. Go back where...